Hello, you're watching Sideline on MNB World. This year marks the 50th anniversary of Mongolia-Canada relations and on this occasion we have invited to our studio Ambassador Extraordinary and Planning Potential of Canada to Mongolia, Mrs. Catherine Ivkov. Hello. Hello, uh, Sainbainu, thank you very much for inviting me to talk with you. Uh, thank you for accepting our invitation and I would like to start our interview directly from the diplomatic relations between our two countries. And as we know, the diplomatic relations was established in 1973, but some historical documents uh, show that uh, the talks between Canada and Mongolia began in 1960s. And looking back at these 50 years, what were the main uh, accomplishments of diplomatic relations between our two countries and what are the areas uh, the two countries are currently focusing on? Well, Canada and Mongolia have really accomplished a lot together over many, many years. And you're right that even before we established diplomatic relations 50 years ago, our countries were working together. Mm -hmm. Canada was a very big supporter of Mongolia joining the United Nations as a mm -hmm. full member state. And that was before we had established diplomatic relations. Mm -hmm. Then when we did establish diplomatic relations 50 years ago, our bilateral relations really began to grow a lot in a number of different areas. Mm -hmm. One, of course, is foreign policy and international relations mm -hmm. and our cooperation internationally. Another area is trade. And more recently, a third area is international development assistance. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do also have other areas of our cooperation that, that are very important. And this includes defense cooperation, mm -hmm. where our ministries of defense and our armed forces, mm -hmm. the Canadian armed forces and the Mongolian armed forces cooperate a lot mm -hmm. together. And of course, we cooperate on consular matters mm -hmm. as well. And um, providing consular assistance is one of the core uh, areas mm -hmm. in which diplomats work. Mm -hmm. um, and I can say that um, at the beginning, when we established diplomatic relations, uh, we did not have embassies in uh, each other's countries mm -hmm right away. Mm -hmm. That took a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, now we do have uh, wonderful embassies. Uh, Mongolia established its embassy in Ottawa, mm -hmm. our capital, in 2001. And Canada opened its embassy here in Ulaanbaatar in 2008. Mm -hmm. And so with the establishment of embassies, uh, mm -hmm. this also was a really big boost uh, mm -hmm. to our uh, bilateral cooperation and our, our work together because uh, it allows for uh, much more mm -hmm. um, immediate um, in-person mm -hmm. work mm -hmm. uh, in our respective countries. Mm -hmm. And so that's also been a very positive development. Mm -hmm. And I would also add that um, over the years, we have had some very significant high-level visits mm -hmm. between Canada and Mongolia. And um, these are always very important and significant mm -hmm. events uh, that highlight our work together mm -hmm. and, um, and really solidify and strengthen mm -hmm. our relationship. Mm -hmm. When we talk about the diplomatic relations between our two countries, we cannot leave uh, the defense and security sector. And as we know, last March, the defense attaché of the Canada, Mr. Uh, Andrew Clark, has visited Mongolia and he had some meetings with the Ministry of uh, Defense in Mongolia. And what were the key outcomes of these meetings? Hmm. Well, as I said, um, our defense relations are, are a very important part mm -hmm. of, our, of our work together. And um, this is also because you know, we have very friendly defense mm -hmm. relations because uh, for both of our countries, uh, we have a shared commitment mm -hmm. to upholding the rules-based international order. Mm -hmm. And uh, this includes with the work of our armed forces. Mm -hmm. And um, now, I'm also very pleased to say that um, Canada is investing 
uh, new funding uh, in this whole region mm -hmm. of, of Asia um, to expand the presence of the mm -hmm. Canadian Armed Forces uh, by sending additional um, air and land forces mm -hmm. to enable more participation in international exercises mm -hmm. and operations with regional mm -hmm. partners and allies. Mm -hmm. um, and so this will include, I think, um, the increased opportunity to mm -hmm. participate more together uh, with with Mongolia. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that the Canadian Armed Forces have been doing um, is participating in the conquest, mm -hmm. uh, peacekeeping exercises. Mm -hmm. And when our defense attaché, Captain mm -hmm. Andrew Clark, was here in March, um, he confirmed that the Canadian Armed Forces would participate uh, this year again mm -hmm. in the conquest. Mm -hmm. So we're very pleased about that. Uh, he also had a very productive meeting with the Deputy Minister of Defense mm -hmm. of Mongolia, where uh, Mongolia reiterated its interest in holding a defense dialogue in Canada mm -hmm. as soon as scheduling can be arranged. So as a result of this, uh, mm -hmm. Canadian and Mongolian officials are working on scheduling this bilateral defense mm -hmm. meeting in Ottawa to take mm -hmm. place very soon. Uh, and uh, another meeting that Captain Andrew Clark had uh, was with um, Colonel Moller Bold Jambal, mm -hmm. who's the head of the Department of Military Cooperation mm -hmm. and Peace Operations. And um, so in that meeting, um, uh, we were able to confirm that um, that Mongolia will participate in Canada's um, military training mm -hmm. and cooperation mm -hmm. program course for for this year. Mm -hmm. um, this military um, training and cooperation program that Canada uh, offers mm -hmm. um, plays a very important role in uh, building the capacity of our partners and in advancing defense diplomacy. And um, this is a program for sponsored training to uh, Ministry of Defense mm -hmm. nominated personnel mm -hmm. from many uh, developing and non-NATO member mm -hmm. countries, um, including in, in Asia. And Mongolia joined this program in 2005. And this was an important uh, element in uh, Mongolia preparing its armed forces mm -hmm. for uh, the very uh, impressive role that the Mongolian mm -hmm. forces play in UN peacekeeping mm -hmm. operations. And uh, some of the training that Mongolian armed forces have participated in in Canada includes uh, English language training mm -hmm. and French language training, and also peacekeeping courses. and. I'm very pleased to say that Mongolia has earned a very positive reputation mm -hmm. uh, within our military cooperation um, mm -hmm. um, uh, program uh, because the Mongolian forces are very um, responsive to the course offerings and the candidates mm -hmm. that Mongolia sends for this training are always of very, very high quality. Mm -hmm. Experienced, um, yeah. Yes, yes. And um, the Mongolian um, armed forces regularly select candidates that will make very direct mm -hmm. use of this training. Uh, for example, uh, personnel who have upcoming deployments for United mm -hmm. Nations peacekeeping operations. Mm -hmm. uh, Canada is considered one of the model democracy countries and for a country like Mongolia who has adopted uh, the democratic regime uh, only 30 years ago, I think there are a lot of things to learn from Canada. Is there like uh, some projects or programs implemented by the Embassy of Canada in terms of human rights and uh, promoting democratic values in Mongolia? Yes, there are quite a few uh, programs because, again, uh, this is a core uh, foundation mm -hmm. of, uh, of Canada's relationship mm -hmm. with Mongolia. Both of our countries are democracies mm -hmm. and parliamentary mm -hmm. democracies. And for both of our countries, um, promoting and respecting human rights and the rule of law mm -hmm. and um, 
independence of the judiciary are very important mm -hmm. fundamental principles. Mm -hmm. uh, both of our countries enjoy uh, media freedom mm -hmm. um, and uh, basic democratic principles mm -hmm. that we know uh, we must work hard mm -hmm. uh, to to strengthen mm -hmm. and to to protect mm -hmm. and so Canada's development assistance mm -hmm. work in Mongolia mm -hmm. um, always has a very large uh, gender component mm -hmm. because uh, we have a feminist international assistance policy mm -hmm. and um, the core of this policy is that is that um, equal opportunities for all people, mm -hmm. regardless of gender, mm -hmm. to participate in political, economic, mm -hmm. social, and cultural life is the best way to ensure increased mm -hmm. prosperity and security for all people. So I, I will say that for Canada in particular, Canada was ranked uh, 12th on mm -hmm. the Democracy mm -hmm. Index mm -hmm. out of 165 countries mm -hmm. on the 2022 annual edition of um, the, e the Economist uh, Intelligence uh, Unit's mm -hmm. um, Democracy mm -hmm. Index. Uh, and uh, this, is, um, this is published in the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, we believe that a high level of democratic governance also serves as the foundation for Canada's economic mm -hmm. achievements. Mm -hmm. uh, democracy has benefits in all areas mm -hmm. of society. And democratic governance and adherence to the rule of law are, are very fundamental for, um, for the business sector mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, in Mongolia, uh, Canada and our ministry, Global Affairs Canada, mm -hmm. has funded a very successful development assistance project mm -hmm. called Towards a Professional and Citizen-Centered mm -hmm. Civil Service. This project has been implemented by the United Nations Development Program, mm -hmm. UNDP, and it assists the government of Mongolia in implementing the 2017 uh, civil service law mm -hmm. um, that um, came into force and um, this project has partnered with government agencies including the Civil mm -hmm. Service Council, uh, the Cabinet Secretariat, mm -hmm. the National Academy of Governance and uh, the Independent Authority mm -hmm. Against Corruption and the National mm -hmm. Human Rights Commission. And uh, the project has aimed at strengthening the legal and policy framework mm -hmm. to build a more professional and mm -hmm. merit-based civil service. Mm -hmm. uh, also to build the professional and mm -hmm. leadership capacities and gender equality mm -hmm. in the public administration and to promote uh, the role of citizens in monitoring mm -hmm. the performance of mm -hmm. the public administration. And the project also draws on the experience of the mm -hmm. Canadian public service. Mm -hmm. And you might know that Canada's public service is, has been rated as one of the most effective in the world, according to mm -hmm. the results of a study um, in the UK in mm -hmm. 2017 that compares the performance mm -hmm. of government workforces in uh, 31 countries. Mm -hmm. So we have been uh, sharing a lot of practices and expertise uh, with Mongolia in mm -hmm. this project. And um, the project has carried out many um, capacity building mm -hmm. uh, and training mm -hmm. activities. And mm -hmm. uh, we have been very, very pleased with the results. Mm -hmm. um, I would also like to mention one other more recent mm -hmm. project um, funded by the government mm -hmm. of Canada. And this is a project that has focused on uh, increasing the independence of mm -hmm. the judiciary mm -hmm. in Mongolia. Uh, this has been a technical assistance uh, partnership project mm -hmm. carried out by, by our ministry, Global Affairs mm -hmm. Canada, and uh, the Office of Federal Judicial mm -hmm. Affairs in Canada. Mm -hmm. And that's an agency which deploys uh, Canadian judges mm -hmm. and other legal experts mm -hmm. to countries abroad mm -hmm. uh, to allow them uh, to share their expertise. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this technical assistance project, mm -hmm. which was um, recently concluded mm -hmm. here in Mongolia, um, 
Our Canadian experts worked specifically mm -hmm. with members of the General Judicial Council mm -hmm. of Mongolia and the Judicial Disciplinary Committee, mm -hmm. uh, supporting them in implementing the 2021 mm -hmm. law on the judiciary mm -hmm. and um, working on some very specific areas. Mm -hmm. um, so last October, uh, 2022, mm -hmm. many members of these Mongolian um, uh, entities went mm -hmm. to Canada mm -hmm. for a study tour, mm -hmm. which was very, very successful. And then uh, in 2023, two Canadian chief justices, mm -hmm. uh, the Chief Justice of the Court of Appeal of New Brunswick, mm -hmm. um, Chief Justice Marc Richard, mm -hmm. and the Chief Justice of the Alberta Court of King's mm -hmm. Bench, mm -hmm. Chief Justice Mary Moreau, mm -hmm. came to Mongolia two times Mm -hmm. uh, to work very intensely uh, mm -hmm. with the General Judicial Council and the Judicial Disciplinary mm -hmm. Committee. And the results that they have mm -hmm. all achieved working together has really surpassed our expectations. Mm -hmm. It's been very, very impressive. Mm -hmm. um, so in the framework of this pilot, um, the General Judicial Council and the Judicial Disciplinary Committee have uh, embraced a new proposed ethical principles mm -hmm. for judges and also the establishment of an ethics advisory committee mm -hmm. uh, which helps judges mm -hmm. to um, work out challenging ethical mm -hmm. situations. Um, also in this project, the Judicial Disciplinary Committee developed a communication mm -hmm. strategy that promotes uh, trust in the judiciary. Mm -hmm. It helps deter judicial misconduct and also promote a more engaged um, uh, public. Mm -hmm. uh, and it helps communication between mm -hmm. the judiciary and, and the public. Mm -hmm. And um, so this project has been, has been very successful uh, and we hope uh, very much that we may be able to mm -hmm. continue it uh, with a second phase. Mm -hmm. So that's something we're waiting for further information on. Mm -hmm. uh, talking about the uh, latest visits between our two countries, in 2022, the Speaker of the Canadian Senate paid a visit to Mongolia. And what were the key outcomes of this visit? Mm. Yes, uh, we were delighted with the visit of the Honorable George Fury mm -hmm. uh, to Mongolia last fall. Um, he is the Speaker of the Senate mm -hmm. of Canada and uh, he came to Mongolia for an official visit uh, together with a delegation mm -hmm. of three Canadian senators, mm -hmm. Senator Michel Odette, mm -hmm. Senator Larry Campbell and mm -hmm. Senator Bernadette Clément. Mm -hmm. And I will say this was the second official visit of a speaker mm -hmm. of Canada uh, to Mongolia. The visit of Speaker Fury to Mongolia was very successful and Mongolian officials uh, placed very high importance on this visit, especially taking place in the 50th anniversary mm -hmm. of the establishment of our diplomatic relations, well, in mm -hmm. the lead up to mm -hmm. our 50th anniversary. And so during this visit, um, Speaker Fury met with um, high level officials mm -hmm. of the Mongolian mm -hmm. government. He had very productive discussions mm -hmm. and intense meetings uh, with Speaker of the Mongolian mm -hmm. Parliament, mm -hmm. Zandan Shatter, mm -hmm. as well as with President Horelsuk mm -hmm. and with Prime Minister Oyun Erden. Mm -hmm. And um, he had many um, very valuable exchanges with them mm -hmm. about topics of mutual interest, mm -hmm. including uh, the promotion and mm -hmm. protection of human rights, mm -hmm. uh, strengthening democracy, mm -hmm. um, promoting gender equality mm -hmm. um, and issues of international affairs, um, affairs which mm -hmm. are of interest and importance mm -hmm. for both Mongolia and Canada. Mm -hmm. And Speaker Fury and his delegation also paid a one-day visit um, to the South Gobi to mm -hmm. visit the Oyutolgoi mine site mm -hmm. and the nearby community of Hanbogd. Mm -hmm. This was the first um, high-level visit by a Canadian official um, since the Oyutolgoi mine 
first opened. Mm -hmm. And um, as you as you know, uh, Canada and Canadian mm -hmm. companies have played a very key mm -hmm. role um, in the development mm -hmm. of the Oyo Tolgoi mine mm -hmm. <clears throat> over the years. And mm -hmm. we are very, very proud of this Canadian mm -hmm. contribution uh, to what is really a world-class mm -hmm. project and um, will be very uh, beneficial mm -hmm. to the Mongolian economy. Mm -hmm. um, Speaker Fury could see when he paid the visit to Oyu Tolgoi that um, working at that mine uh, provides many excellent professional development mm -hmm. opportunities mm -hmm. for Mongolian citizens mm -hmm. who are working there. Mm -hmm. And this includes many excellent professional opportunities uh, for women. Mm -hmm. And Speaker Fury and his delegation uh, had the opportunity to meet with the Women in Mining group at Oyu Tolgoi and uh, discuss with them uh, what kind of careers uh, they, are, mm -hmm. they are leading uh, mm -hmm. at Oyu Tolgoi. Uh, and he was also able to meet with many of the Canadian citizens mm -hmm. who are working at the mm -hmm. site. And um, in addition, um, he spent a very special time visiting with a local herder family mm -hmm. to learn and to understand about um, the herder's lifestyle mm -hmm. and uh, to hear from the family mm -hmm. um, about um, their perspective mm -hmm. uh, on the region and Oyu Tolgoi as well. Mm -hmm. So um, Speaker Fury also met with representatives of um, Canadian businesses in Mongolia uh, and he met with um, implementing partners of our mm -hmm. development assistance projects. Mm -hmm. So all in all, uh, it was a very rich Mm -hmm. visit that took in all of the key areas of our bilateral mm -hmm. cooperation mm -hmm. and uh, we were we were very very pleased that this mm -hmm. was able to take place. Mm -hmm. uh, talking about the key areas of bilateral cooperation between our two countries we cannot leave trade and investment and business sectors and what are the Canada's priorities in these areas? Mm. Trade and, and business is always important uh, mm -hmm. for us and um, at this time, um, you know, we know that um, the mining sector mm -hmm. will continue to be of great strategic importance mm -hmm. for both Canada and Mongolia mm -hmm. and uh, we believe that we can continue to have very valuable mm -hmm. collaboration uh, in this area. Mm -hmm. um, we want to ensure that we are doing what we can uh, to support the sustainable development of the mining sector mm -hmm. in Mongolia. And one of our main objectives overall is to support uh, the green economy mm -hmm. in Mongolia. Um, environmental sustainability and combating climate change mm -hmm. and the impact of climate change is a big priority in both Canada mm -hmm. and Mongolia. And so we are focusing on this in our trade mm -hmm. and business work as well. And uh, we are focusing on efforts, for example, to support uh, green mining solutions mm -hmm. in Mongolia, which help support the sustainable mm -hmm. development of the mining sector. And this includes environmental, mm -hmm. social and governance considerations mm -hmm. or ESG, mm -hmm. which has become a big priority for mining operations all around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, we also are working to support areas such as clean tech solutions. Um, there are many Canadian companies that have uh, very innovative uh, clean tech solutions, which I think um, would be very applicable in Mongolia. Uh, we are looking at um, supporting renewable energy mm -hmm. solutions for mm -hmm. mines. Um, ESG training and also um, the uh, framework called the Toward Sustainable Mining or mm -hmm. TSM framework, mm -hmm. which was developed by the Mining Association of mm -hmm. Canada and which has been adopted by the mining associations mm -hmm. of many countries around the world. Mm -hmm. And so, um, again, we believe that this would be beneficial mm -hmm. for Mongolia. Um, but in addition to the mining sector, we are working very hard to diversify our trading relationship with Mongolia in areas such as climate smart agriculture, mm -hmm. uh, energy efficiency mm -hmm. and green building. Mm -hmm. And I will mention that um, our two-way trade um, is um, 
is somewhat limited at about 17 million dollars per year um, but we are working on increasing that mm -hmm. and the largest exports from Canada to Mongolia are machinery, electronic mm. equipment, heavy equipment, um, uh, well, consumer goods and industrial and basic chemicals, um, and uh, imports from uh, Mongolia to mm -hmm. Canada um, mostly include consumer goods mm -hmm. and farm and fishing mm -hmm. products, forestry products, and uh, metal and mineral mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. products. Mm -hmm. uh, lately, uh, the international community has suffered a lot from the COVID-19 pandemic and in, for the last one year we see that uh, some countries shift from democratic values to more like authoritarian mm -hmm. rules and what are your thoughts about on this issue? Well, thank you for this question. This is a very important topic to discuss because we all know that the international mm -hmm. situation has become very mm -hmm. complex and challenging and um, things like the global pandemic mm -hmm. uh, and conflicts mm -hmm. like the war in Ukraine uh, have very serious uh, impacts on health and safety and economic stability mm -hmm. as well. The trend towards authoritarianism is a cause for concern. Mm -hmm. Countries that are moving away from democratic principles can have a very detrimental mm -hmm. effect on the international community mm -hmm. and these actions can lead to human rights violations. Mm -hmm. They can also lead to suppressing freedom of mm -hmm. speech and a lack of accountability. Mm -hmm. In Canada, democracy is a very fundamental principle mm -hmm. that underpins Canadian society and mm -hmm. governance and is very essential to Canada's identity, mm -hmm. values and our way of life. And mm -hmm. this is a fundamental um, value that we share mm -hmm. with Mongolia as well. Mm -hmm. We know that democracy ensures that all citizens have an equal say in the policies and the decisions that mm -hmm. affect their lives. Democracy allows for a peaceful transfer of mm -hmm. power, mm -hmm. which is also essential for maintaining stability and mm -hmm. for avoiding conflicts. And it is very important for the international community to stand very firm and to defend democratic mm -hmm. values and to hold countries accountable mm -hmm. when they fall short of these standards. Mm -hmm. So Canada cooperates bilaterally mm -hmm. and in many multilateral forums, mm -hmm. including the United Nations, the G7, mm -hmm. the G20, uh, NATO mm -hmm. and the Commonwealth to support democracy, human rights and the rule of law around mm -hmm. the world. Canada remains very committed to supporting those who are striving to restore democracy mm -hmm. and freedom in their countries, mm -hmm. whether it's in Sudan or mm -hmm. in Myanmar or in Ukraine mm -hmm. or elsewhere. Mm -hmm. In this very challenging environment, mm -hmm. it's very crucial that countries work together mm -hmm. towards common goals and prioritize cooperation and diplomacy. And we believe that by working together, we can better tackle the challenges that we face and ensure a more stable and peaceful and prosperous future mm -hmm. for all people. Mm -hmm. And again, I will just reiterate that it's our very strong uh, democratic principles and values that both Canada and Mongolia mm -hmm. share, uh, which have allowed us to build such a strong and positive mm -hmm. relationship and um, we look forward to continuing to work with Mongolia as a democratic partner in mm -hmm. the future. Mm -hmm. uh, returning back to our conversation about the diplomatic relations anniversary, uh, what kind of activities in 2023 the embassy is planning to conduct hmm. in this regard? Yeah. Yes, we're very happy to be celebrating the 50th anniversary. And so uh, in this context, um, we are working on activities and programs which we feel will meaningfully continue mm. to strengthen our bilateral relations. Mm -hmm. I was mentioning earlier the Technical Assistance Partnership Program mm -hmm. that we recently concluded mm -hmm. uh, working 
um, in the area of the judiciary. Mm -hmm. And so in this year of our 50th anniversary, mm -hmm. we hope that we will be able to uh, continue mm -hmm. that project. So that is something that, mm -hmm. that we are working on and I hope that it will be possible. Mm -hmm. uh, we are also uh, very actively exploring the potential to mm -hmm. Uh, implement a second phase mm -hmm. of several of our development assistance mm -hmm. projects in Mongolia. Mm -hmm. uh, this includes uh, the project that we recently concluded mm -hmm. um, about strengthening the response to gender-based mm -hmm. violence in mm -hmm. Mongolia. This was implemented by the International Development Law mm -hmm. Organization. Very successful project and mm -hmm. so we are now exploring the possibility uh, for a second phase. Mm -hmm. um, we are also um, uh, exploring the possibility for a second phase of our project um, supporting the civil service mm -hmm. reform in Mongolia. And I will also mention our MERIT project, mm -hmm. which has been our largest development assistance project mm -hmm. over the last number of years. Mm -hmm. And um, this project has also been tremendously successful in working with the Ministry of Mining and Heavy Industry and other government partners to strengthen the policy implementation capacity mm -hmm. in Mongolia in the extractive sector. Mm -hmm. But this merit project also has a very strong gender component mm -hmm. and has worked a lot with the civil service. Mm -hmm. So it's very complementary to our civil service reform project mm -hmm. and we are also exploring the possibility mm -hmm. for a second phase mm -hmm. of the merit project. Mm -hmm. So um, in this 50th uh, anniversary year, uh, we are we are actively working on our development assistance, and um, this includes um, our active work to uh, try to expand our development assistance mm -hmm. in a new area mm -hmm. of climate smart agriculture. Mm -hmm. So that's another key um, component we are working on. Mm -hmm. uh, also this year, uh, we will be holding um, together with our Mongolian counterparts. Uh, the 10th Canada-Mongolia Roundtable, mm -hmm. um, which is a very important um, dialogue between Canada and Mongolia, which is held every two years. And this year, uh, Mongolia will be hosting the Roundtable mm -hmm. uh, here in Mongolia. So we are working together with our Mongolian partners uh, to confirm a date for that. Mm -hmm. And the Canada-Mongolia Roundtable uh, provides a forum for a very rich discussion touching on all areas of our bilateral mm -hmm. relations and also a discussion about international mm -hmm. issues uh, that are of mutual concern and interest to mm -hmm. both Canada and mm -hmm. Mongolia. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are looking forward uh, to the roundtable. Uh, I will also note that um, uh, Mongolia will be hosting uh, once again, the UB Dialogue mm -hmm. um, later in June, mm -hmm. and uh, Canada has participated actively um, in the UB Dialogue, mm -hmm. and I'm very pleased uh, that we will have officials coming from our headquarters mm -hmm. uh, to participate again mm -hmm. uh, this year. These are always very valuable discussions um, which uh, focus on uh, various issues more related to this region regional of the world, security regional issues. security mm -hmm. issues, and um, and those are also also very important as well. Mm -hmm. um, but already earlier this year, we have had some other other events. Um, our embassy holds an essay competition every mm -hmm. year for Mongolian high school students. Mm -hmm. um, to prepare essays in, in English mm -hmm. um, about a particular topic. Mm -hmm. And so um, this year, um, the topic was about Canada-Mongolia relations. Mm -hmm. And so we received many excellent submissions from high school students mm -hmm. across Mongolia. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were very happy with the success of the, mm -hmm. of the competition. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for providing updates and insights on Canada-Mongolia relations. Thank you very much for inviting me. It was a pleasure talking with you. Well, that was the new episode of Sightline. Today in our episode, we had Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of Canada to Mongolia, Mrs. Catherine Ivkov. We'll see you next time with more stories and updates. Have a nice day.